we just got a bunch of new and additional details around Cyberpunk 2077. A few things happened with the game this week, some new news around the game and its status from CD Projekt Red, but even some other things like some additional hands-on events, some leaked images of what's going to come with the collector's edition of the game. A Russian version of the Night City Wire recently went live, and from that we got some additional looks at gameplay and new details from it directly, and just in general, I hope this video serves to almost act as a roundup of some of the news and additional details we've heard over the past few days. If you guys want to stay up to date with Cyberpunk 2077 or just support this channel, a great way is to leave a like or this video or subscribe for more. It's actually the single best way to help a video with the YouTube algorithm. But with that said, let's first take a look at the simplest news. That being, Cyberpunk 2077 has gone gold. So what this means is the gold master of Cyberpunk 2077 is ready. So hypothetically, this is the version of the game that will be put onto discs and then copied and mass produced. So November 19th, when you open your game, you'll have this version. Now, of course, work is likely not stopping. In reality, what we're going to be seeing is a day one patch or some additional updates internally, but the big takeaway is the game is complete. This 100% confirms that no additional delays are on the horizon because if they've made it to this stage, it means the game is ready. Another pretty interesting aspect of this to get excited for is it does mark one additional milestone towards reviews or media hands-on for this game. We, of course, saw media hands-on earlier in May, and actually we're going to hear a bit more about that later in this video, but full-on reviews or complete access by media is something to get excited for, and CD Projekt Red tends to be pretty good with this. With The Witcher 3, reviews for that game originally dropped six days before the game's release, and we'll likely see something similar with Cyberpunk. It has been discussed in some of the recent conference calls that reviewers should get the game a few weeks before release, and reviews will drop a week before release. So hypothetically, in just a few weeks from right now, reviewers could have their hands on this game, which is pretty exciting, because of course they're going to need some time to play the absolute mammoth of a game that Cyberpunk 2077 is looking to be. Although do know there will probably be NDAs, it's not like they could just share all the details. Outside of that, we actually got an image of some Militech stuff on fire, relatively minor thing, but it looks pretty cool so I wanted to highlight it. But one of the other big things to happen with Cyberpunk 2077 is the Russian Night City Wire. Just last week we saw the Tokyo Game Show version of Night City Wire, that of course being in Japanese, and at TGS we got quite a bit of new gameplay. A lot of that gameplay was also shown during the Russian Night City Wire, but one, it's way higher bitrate, so just in general it looks better, but also actually looks better. Something I noticed while watching the Tokyo Game Show version of Night City Wire, it just looked weirdly washed out. Like it was definitely a huge improvement over 2018, but now comparing 2018 to the Tokyo Game Show to the Russian Night City Wire, you can see that Russian version definitely looks pretty phenomenal. Again, partially because a higher bitrate stream, but also it definitely looks like the lighting is a bit better. Unfortunately, none of this gameplay was new. It technically is new in that it is filmed on the Russian version of the game, but it's all scenes and segments we've already seen in the past, but we did get some new details. During Tokyo Game Show, we heard how Saburu Arasaka, this character, would only speak Japanese no matter which version of Cyberpunk you were playing, but it seems like this will extend to other characters also. The Scavengers Gang will only speak Russian. Reportedly, there's two characters to arrive in Night City from the USSR on a diplomatic mission, and they will also only speak Russian, and even there's some characters that will only speak Creole. Of course, in game, this will be translated to us, but the character themselves will be speaking in a different language, regardless of which version of the game you're playing. So some characters will only ever speak one language, and I, for one, actually think that's going to be really cool. We also hear that thousands of hours of dialogue was recorded solely for the ambiance of the city. So miscellaneous exchanges between NPCs just on the streets, whether it be cleaning up, arguing with one another, or something else. Something else we saw pop up online is what is technically a leak of some of the physical edition contents, so some things that will come when you buy a physical edition of this game, like a map and a couple of postcards. But this happens to be one of the best and most detailed looks we have at the complete map of Night City. It of course isn't the highest res, but it does give you a pretty nice overview of the city overall. You can see the Space Center has made a return. In one of the past trailers, the Space Center was ominously missing from a render of Night City, but it is on this official map, so it seemingly will be in the game. In the past, there's actually been some rumors that there will be a moon mission in Cyberpunk 2077, but of course none of that's confirmed. There's been some discussion that the map in general looks small. We've heard in the past that the map is technically slightly smaller than The Witcher 3 map, but of course significantly more vertical. Even just looking at some of the gameplay, there are many floors, too many buildings, a lot more density in this map. And to those people saying this map looks very small in comparison, one comparison I offer to you is actually the map of Los Santos. You've probably explored Los Santos, and it 
is a pretty sizable game world, but just looking at the map, it definitely feels a lot smaller than it really is. I'm pretty sure the scale of Cyberpunk 2077's Night City will blow many of us away, and I don't know if this map is the best reference to go off of as far as how big it's going to be. And there are also some postcards shared with this. Although taking this news together, we do enter into an interesting point for Cyberpunk 2077. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the game has gone gold, we do have a leak I'm covering right here, and as this game starts to get shipped to reviewers and hands-on does expand, as there's likely going to be a ton of review copies out there just based off the interest this game has alone, I wouldn't be shocked if more or additional leaks start to become a problem, just from people playing this game. A reviewer tells one of his friends, oh I did this cool thing, that gets spread, and suddenly you see posts on Discord claiming certain things. I don't really have more to say on that, it's just a thought to have. This is something that may start to happen more and more as we approach the final release date. Something else that's pretty interesting, we saw two new ad spots for Cyberpunk 2077. The No Limits and Seize the Day trailer, kinda. They're a mix up of Keanu Reeves, some in-game gameplay, and a new CG trailer. And that last part's important, as it was actually confirmed on Twitter that the CG shots we see during this are part of something bigger, or at the very least, there's more CGI shots on the horizon, which seems to indicate a bigger CG trailer. We have heard how Cyberpunk 2077's marketing is going to really ramp up in the final stretch as we do approach release, so I wouldn't be shocked if we're going to see a lot more like this. There are a few new things to pick out of this, but mostly CGI. There are quite a few shots on implants, which definitely makes it seem like this new and upcoming CGI trailer could focus heavily on that. Even further, we actually see some new vehicles in action, this one definitely looking like it's inspired by the Bugatti Veyron, and even a face-off between V and a member of the Night City Police Department. So we just have these for now, but I imagine over the next month we're going to see quite a few more little spots like this get released on YouTube. Although one other thing we did just see get released are some previews of this game. As you probably remember, there was a big event right after Night City Wire 1, where many people from all over the world get hands-on for 3-4 to four hours with the game, and it seems like a similar event just happened in the past week in Brazil, where many outlets could get hands-on with Cyberpunk 2077 for a similar 3 hours. Although an important disclaimer, this was actually in that same May build, so it's not like they had an updated version of the game, and even further, it seems like for basically all of them, the game was being streamed to them. Much of this new info was published in Portuguese, but a few of the key takeaways, you could actually see your character pretty often despite the game being first person only, whether it be menus, animations, or even mirrors. Throughout numerous of these first impressions, people said the first person perspective was the best for exploring Night City and they totally understand why CD Projekt chose that. And even further, if you look down, you could actually see your feet and legs, and it felt like these were well placed based off your perspective. I'm not sure I've seen anyone else actually mention that. Numerous times, it was mentioned how Night City felt very alive, and unlike anything the previewer had played before, driving did not feel arcade-like during the preview, but it also requires some tweaking. It was weighty, but definitely had some issues, but again, considering how old this build is, it definitely could have been tweaked already. And also an interesting observation that I guess we kind of knew about, but I never really thought about, was the use of vehicles to advance the narrative was kind of unique here. But at least in these first three hours, there are several instances where you're not even driving. You're in the passenger seat talking, or even shooting shooting out the window, which is pretty unique when it comes to games. We've definitely seen a lot of that with Cyberpunk, but you don't often do that in video games. It was described how your different choices or what outcomes you decided to go towards in a mission had a pretty big impact on what became of it. Animations are described as being way above the Outer Worlds or Fallout. There were no rough animations or generic poses. Everything that was happening in Cyberpunk from an animation perspective felt very organic and even cinematic. As you do missions in the game and you meet new people, you actually grow a contact list on your cell phone, and from your cell phone you could communicate with them via calls or text message, very GTA 5-esque. There were a ton of new details from that, I'm going to have a link to all those articles down below, but if you've seen the past previews, there's a lot of overlap, and again a reminder, most of these articles are in Portuguese, but otherwise yeah, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you found this informative or helpful, just keeping you up to date with Cyberpunk 2077 and its happenings, but otherwise, as always again, I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.